Chapter 2 The Deceitful Heart Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, 3rd through the 4th verse. Some would argue that mankind has evolved into very loving and caring people. However, some would strongly disagree. One of the apostles of Jesus Christ almost 2,500 years ago affirmed that a person's heart would deceive their mental and emotional state, causing them to live and walk with the mask. But what does it mean to wear a mask? A mask is created to cover or conceal the original image of someone or something The Apostle Peter expressed how it was easy for a person to adorn the outer appearance of themselves by dressing up and pretending to be wholesome, friendly, and reliable, only to see that the heart of a person has cracks and flaws which are masked and put on display as refined, intelligent, and built up to look perfect, confident, and shameless. The passage continues to say, rather, according to the lexical dictionary, the word rather means a substitute or alternative to, in place of. Thus, when we read the passage, It tells us to let our humility and grace of incorruptible beauty be hidden deep in our hearts. Let us reevaluate how people see us. Do they see just what we or who we want them to see? Or have we hidden our hearts from them well enough to conceal what a vacuum effect really created in our lives? When we experience a vacuum effect, It tears away the hope of seeing what we would or could become in our future. Have you ever witnessed how a child grows up from a baby with similar features to the parent, but at a certain age, the features or mannerisms of one of the parents began to show heavily in their lives? (laughs) You would often hear someone say, you sure look like. Or, your so-and-so used to do the same things that you are doing now. But if you weren't around anyone, who could affirm these character traits in you as inherited mannerism? How would you search for your identity and ask why would you do such things? For decades, I concealed the vacuum effect and how damaging it was for me. Growing up without a father in my life, it was something that left me searching for identity, affirmation, and leadership. I needed to know that I was loved and cared for by the parent who looked like me and understood that I was a part of them and that my character flaws may be connected to theirs genetically, which meant that I belong and was someone in the world that knows and understands my heart. This essential factor carried me further in my growth and development as a man, father, and parent. I did not want my children not to know me or understand the characteristics which they inherited. You know, the generational curse of being fatherless needed not to continue with me to them. Yet, when strongholds are not broken from your life, you can only be assured that some curses will continue. This is why we truly need to understand that it is not the outer person, the worth, the wealth, the clothes, and possessions that changes 
the curse. It is the heart that destroys the curse and removes the emptiness that permits us to turn inwardly to the past hurts and pain only to ferociously release it on the next generation or loved ones. Peter was right in saying that our hearts must be incorruptible to the past mistakes of our parents or people with whom we desire to have relationships. The only way to prevent this is to change the dynamics of how we view ourselves first. We cannot continue to hope for a better existence when we still think of the past. The deceitful heart makes it easy for us to continue feeling the hurt of our history. It also keeps us bound to the powerlessness we felt being hurt and abused through relationships. Finally, it allows us to become the abuser in a way that the heart would say, Didn't anyone save me, so why should I save them? Imperatively, please take a second and look at how we present ourselves and hearts to others. Meaning, the true essence of who we have become post-vacuum effect is showing right now in our lives. What are we showing to some and what are some of the comments that you hear that are positive and encouraging are being said about you? Are others seeing kindness, love, and compassion exhibited when you are assigned to make a difference in a person's life? We should realize that every person crossing our path has a purpose in our development as men and women. It is not by chance that we meet a person and fall in love or become friends. We are meant to be in a relationship or fall for that person. However, how we nurture the love and protect the hearts comes from our past experiences. This is a twofold and has to be reciprocated for any relationship to grow the way Peter tells us was possible. An incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit was the description. This heart may not experience the perils of the vacuum, nor has this person been abused in any way. That's why our hearts must be healed and delivered from past pain in order to receive the gifts God has placed in our path. We cannot see the light God has placed on the hill for us to be delivered from our dark state because we are still held captive in the darkness of our past, shame and hurt. Being confined in the dark state only creates chaos and pain because the battle between right and wrong, good and bad, healthy and destruction are at war for the heart and mind. You see, the heart and mind are connected to who we are and how we establish relationships. Sometimes we can feel the connection to a person so strongly that we cannot see the hurt and pain within them. Just like a father who has nurtured and loved a child in the best and most supportive way, he believes it's possible. Yet, that father has multiple children around the same ages who are all vying for his attention and love. Someone will deny quality care and the love from him. And someone will be denied that love as well. It is not intentional or malicious in any way towards that child. It's just the way his affections are stretched. One of the children will feel abandoned in a way that causes them to act out and rebel against the father. Ultimately, 
This leads to the child resenting the father for the perception of neglect and denial as a parent. This is one of the subtle ways that the vacuum effect takes hold in a family structure and begins to dismantle the relationship of the home. This dynamic can benefit from the P- what Peter states as a gentle and quiet spirit. You must understand that the functioning of the vacuum effect has many faces in a relationship. We may believe that we are on top of our relationships and nurturing each of them in our minds. We are keeping everything level and happy. However, did we ever stop to take inventory of how conversations with the people around us to find out if we are okay and if there's anything they needed? The immature and deceitful heart tells the child they aren't loved or the parent cares more about the other siblings than them. Yet, each of the children resides in the same home, eats the same food, and partakes in the same activities. However, the child's heart is now subjugated to the vacuum effect and begins to formulate its tainted understanding of happiness and what is right and wrong. The child who previously exhibits an outward appearance of being happy and well-adjusted to their home life and also seems to fit in with all of the scheduled activities of the parents' bylaws of the home, then a gradual shift begins to show in the attitude or mannerism of that child. To the rest of the world, the family is thriving, happy, and very loving. The outer adornment of beauty, fine clothing, nice things, and the nuclear family appearance shows love and joy. Noticeably, there is a shift in one of the children in that home. As their behavior begins to change and their continents change from the others and the child becomes reserved or isolated from the things that used to make them happy. What do you do as a parent if you do not notice the change in that particular child in time? Nothing. It is not because you do not care. It is because you believed Everyone was getting the right amount of love and attention, and therefore you deduced it as growing up or a child finding his or her independence. The vacuum effect has the ability to hide gaps and crevices that ultimately grow into canyons. Therefore, it is imperative to take time to individually Build a stronger bond with your children so each of them knows and is affirmed of your love and support for them. Tell them, I see you and I like you. Parents of twins and medical researchers have concluded an Edinburgh University study on nature, genetics versus nurture environment and which is more impactful on a child's development. Notice that nature and nurture are equally crucial to raising a child or twins. Thus, it is essential to remember that each child is an individual with different perceptions of what love and happiness is. So, As parents, we must treat them as humans with the brain and heart working together to find the right balance in their lives for happiness and peace. The heart's responses will reveal the loudness of your feelings for that child to the fact that your love will never be questioned or challenged because you were able to 
meet the child where they were and imparts words of love and affirmation into their life. As parents, we must always strive to love and give love to every child individually and often by providing them with a foundation built on the type of love and support that never gives the child the impression that they are not loved. If we fail to achieve this as parents to young children, they will grow up in a vacuum where they are searching for someone or something to fill the gap. I'm reminded of a study that said that if the family has three or four children, the middle child will often feel some form of neglect. That is called the middle child syndrome. This is very real and well, a real studied fact in child development. The middle child will feel left out and often neglected, making them feel like they need to work extra hard to gain the parent's affection. They usually fight for their parent's attention, positively or negatively. But there is hope for the middle child as they will begin to gain their independence faster and more likely become overachievers because they are motivated to become noticed and affirmed. When we talk about the heart's deceit, we are talking about what the heart may feel or tell our mind to think about a situation or a person. It is essential to know that our hearts is the catalyst of emotions. When our feelings are primarily in charge, we must find balance and mercy in understanding how we interact with another person. We must not allow past experiences and trials to govern our present perceptions of how we can be happy or if love is present in our lives. We know it is a spiritual journey that requires man's trials and tests to get to that place of peace and happiness. Therefore, just as the Apostle Peter said for us to adorn a gentle beauty and quiet peace, we must pay close attention to what Jesus told us, which is to let our light shine to the world so that the goodness and the mercy of God can reveal his compassion and willingness to infill us with agape love and wisdom.